your guide to the truth. The new American media.com broadcasting to you live from the Milky Way galaxy, the solar system, planet Earth, North America, the United States of America, Kentucky, Louisville, to be specific. Hello, everybody. My name is Brian Engelman, and I am going to be your host as I have been for the past nine years here on the TNAM network because the news always matters. Follow us on the new American media, all of the platforms that we have. We have nine years of content covering sports, current events, politics, humor, preparedness. Uh, growing food, cooking food, food and drink. We have a whole bunch of different groups. Follow us. Connect with us. On, uh, let's see. The Unhappy Hour underscore is our Twitter feed. And once we get to 100 followers on our brand new YouTube channel, we'll give it a name as well. Um, so we'll link it. So in the meantime, follow us on our cornerstone, youtube.com slash the new American Media. Also check out the new American Media.com. Uh, ready. It's overdue for a facelift, so we'll be bringing it to you. Let's run through the world of sports, shall we? <clears throat> Let's start with the Ohio State Buckeyes. <sighs> the Ohio State Buckeyes are being decimated right now. Decimated by the Big Ten. Decimated by Kevin Warren's awful leadership. Canceling the season. Postponing the season. Trying to re-vote. Trying to... You know what? We've lost two top ten picks now. Ohio State cornerback Sean Wade announced Monday that he's opting out of his senior season to prepare for the NFL draft. With the uncertainty of when a Big Ten season will be played, Wade has decided to forego his remaining year of eligibility and move on to the next level. A projected starter and preseason All-American, Wade was listed as the number seven prospect on the big board of ESPN's Mel Kiper Jr. earlier this month. He had been projected as an early round pick <clears throat> in the 2020 NFL draft, but decided to return to the Buckeyes for one more season. Quote, this has been an extremely difficult decision to make, but I know it's the right decision for me, end quote, Wade said in a video on Twitter. He continues, I am forever grateful to Buckeye Nation, looking forward to the next chapter. Ugh. Had the season started like it was supposed to, he would be on our team. This is a team that has national championship aspirations. And let's be honest, if they ever decide to play again... The Ohio State Buckeyes will still have national championship aspirations, but you lose the number seven draft pick in, in the NFL draft. That hurts your team. I know it's next man up. I know it's an NFL football factory at Ohio State. But you have a superstar in his prime college year, and you let him go. And it's not that you let him go. The Big Ten forced him out. There's no science backing any reason why the, 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 there should not be college football this year. Look at all of the other schools playing. Look at the microscopic transmission rates of, of kids, of adolescents. Let, let's not even forget, let's never forget, that these are kids in the peak physical condition of their lives. 18 to 22, 23-year-old kids. Division I college athletes. These are not people, uh, in general, these are people that are not battling old age because old age is a common denominator with most of the people who have been affected and taken out by this global situation. See, I can't even say what it is or else YouTube is going to ban this video like they do with so many because I guess independent media journalists, independent journalists, independent commentators, independent content creators are not allowed to discuss actual current events. Everybody else can. Everybody else can get monetized. But we'll get into that later. Kids are not at high risk. I'll tell you where kids are more at risk. Dropped off on a college campus, not with the structure of a football program, going to house parties, going to bars, going to restaurants, hooking up. What kids do, they're much safer in a strictly regimented football program. No science behind it. Kevin Warren's letting his own kid play football, not letting the Big Ten play football. And now the revolt has gotten loud. But even now, they're talking about, oh, maybe we'll play after the election. Oh, really? After the election? You're going to do this after the election. And you're going to try to tell me, Kevin Warren, that this isn't political? I continue in this article. Wade, back to Sean Wade, Wade had been named a team captain for the upcoming season, whether it was scheduled to be, whenever it was scheduled to be played. 
So we lose our captain in a top 10 draft pick, likely, you know, number seven on the big board. He's the second Ohio State player to opt out after offensive lineman Wyatt Davis did so three days ago. Wyatt Davis, gone. So this fantastic Buckeye team, and and look, let, let's... Let's be grateful that the Ohio State Buckeyes had the best draft class out of all NF, out of all college football last year, this year. It's so hard to even remember last year versus this year. It all seems like a big blur since March. But these are anchors. These are cornerstone players who have been in the program before, who have played before in big-time meaningful games before, who have developed and matured. This hurts. Big name Sean Wade leaving on the defensive side. A big name lineman Wyatt Davis doing so earlier. Crushing the Buckeyes. Painful. So let's look take a let's take a step back out from just looking at the Ohio State Buckeyes. It's from what, a couple of hours ago, this this story? I believe so. Yeah. A couple hours ago. Big Ten schools will all move together in a decision on the football season. It's one for all and all for one. Whether the Big Ten decides to reinstate its fall sports season, it will do so collectively, Wisconsin Chancellor Rebecca Blank told reporters Monday in a rare on-the-record comment by a conference executive. I will say we're all going to move together in the Big Ten, Blank said during the teleconference, audio of which the Detroit News received and reviewed. We're all going to play or not if we possibly can. This isn't going to be a school-by-school thing. The comments came a day after the conference's 14 presidents and chancellors met again Sunday to review updated medical data and, according to Blank, reviewed multiple proposals for a possible football season, but they didn't hold a vote. A formal vote is expected to take place at some point this week, with the Big Ten needing to flip six previous nay votes to yay in order to play football. Yay. The previous vote to postpone the season announced August 11 was 11-3, with Ohio State... Nebraska, and Iowa as the lone yays. According to the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, Wisconsin expected to flip this time. Blank wouldn't confirm that, saying only, there are a variety of things that have changed. No, there haven't been things that have changed. What's changed... Look, it's been a frustrating sports week. The Browns got embarrassed. The, 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 the Cleveland Indians are in complete free fall. And the Buckeyes have already had their season decimated by losing two of their best players already because of this nonsense. Things have changed. What's changed? Kids were never at a high risk of this. Kids were always safer in an athletic program getting consistently tested than being dumped into a college campus. You see, all, you see so many other schools playing. Things haven't changed. What's changed is the backlash from people that are sick of being told that we have to quarantine as healthy people. You should take the elderly and quarantine them. They are the most at risk. People who are obese, people with diabetes, people over the age of 75. There are clear indicators of what marks a high-risk individual. The rest of it, you know what? Things happen. Life is a risk. I could go tomorrow. You could go tomorrow. We can't bubble wrap ourselves and live in a cave. I just, I can't read this stuff. There are a variety of things that have changed. Right, things have changed. What changes, you're starting to see that we're seeing it as hollowly, transparently political. Governor Whitmer. Uh, Kevin Warren. I'm I'm just going to calm down. Deep breath. Good times. Blank says, there are a variety of things that have changed since we first made that decision. But it's unclear what other schools, if any, are prepared to join them amid a still ongoing pandemic. Oh, good grief. Michigan and Michigan State, both with presidents who are infectious disease experts in doctors Mark Schlissel and Samuel L. Stanley, respectively, voted no last time. Neither has given any indication how they'll vote this time. Asked to confirm Blake's comments that this will be an all-or-nothing proposition for the Big Ten, spokespersons for Schlissel and Stanley both declined to comment when reached by the news on Monday. Stanley hasn't spoken to reporters since just after the Big Ten's initial announcement, August 11th. And Schlissel has yet to hold a full press conference. He met individually with the student newspaper. 
quote, the Big Ten Conference will handle any announcements, end quote, a spokesman for Schlissel said in an email to the news. Blank's comments came after Sports Talk radio host Dan Patrick reported earlier Monday that the Big Ten could play on without Michigan, Michigan State, Maryland, and possibly Wisconsin. He said Ohio State, Iowa, Nebraska, Purdue, and Indiana would play. Good, just play! Play the game! This is what you exist for. You don't get these years back. You don't get do-overs. You don't just push the season. Oh yeah, we'll start in the fall or in the spring. No, you won't. You're going to start a season in... By the way, January is winter. That's not spring. Spring is spring. You're going to play in January? These NFL players, these college players preparing for the NFL are going to be in the, the combine. They're preparing for their draft status in January, February, March. They're getting drafted in April. There's not going to be a season in January. You're erasing a season. You've erased a season. You've erased a potential opportunity for the Ohio State Buckeyes to win a championship. You have ruined the opportunity for so many kids to have breakout seasons and get drafted in the NFL. Big Ten, you have screwed up royally. And you know what? Opt out. The Big Ten with more than 10 schools is a stupid name anyway. I, it, it, it's, and it's not even 20 schools. That would be the biggest 10. That'd be double 10. Big Ten double time. Discount double check. It's stupid. If Ohio State needs to opt out, opt out. Leave the damn conference. Telling them they can't play. We're here to play. My idea has been to get Dwayne The Rock Johnson who just bought the XFL. Put a team in Columbus. Done. Hire the players on the team. That's your XFL team. Go semi-pro. You're semi-pro anyway. You don't need the Big Ten. The Big Ten needs Ohio State. Telling them you can't play. Figure it out. I, I just... It's very frustrating. Dan Patrick also said the presidents and chancellors would vote on Monday, but there was no indication that they had voted Monday. The Big Ten continues to face significant pressures from fans, parents, coaches, and players, even President Trump, to give 2020 football a shot. But the conference has been steadfast in that its decision won't be made by outside influences, including one active lawsuit brought by eight Nebraska players. By the way, there needs to be a class action lawsuit, not just eight Nebraska players. This should be all across the Big Ten. This is on Kevin Warren. This is on the spineless chancellors the school administrators, the presidents, the deans, whichever people are ultimately responsible for canceling this college football season. You're not postponing it. You're canceling it. You know what you're doing? You're saying that there will be no bowl games. There will be no competition for a national championship. Well, then you tell me why these blue chip athletes are going to give a damn about your season with nothing on the line. You think they're going to play in January? You think they're going to play a season in April or May or June and miss out on next year? This was a cancellation from the beginning, not a postponement. You're going to miss out on all the bowl games and all the opportunities for the championship. What? You're just, what? The Big Ten thinks they're going to opt out and then play in January and ask the bowl games to wait until April or May to have bowl games and championships? That's never going to happen. That was never in the realm of possibility. You have taken yourself out of the running of a, of a potential championship. It is ludicrous. There needs to be class action lawsuits, not just eight people from Nebraska. <sighs> I didn't realize I was going to get so annoyed by this. But I do realize that I was going to get annoyed by this, which is why I haven't been bringing you daily content, which is why I've been so frustrated with the politis politis polit polit politization? politization? With the injection of politics? No, I know 10 other ways I can say it. Politiciz po po politization? Politicalization? What is it? Is that a word? I've been so annoyed by the influx of politics into the realm of sports. It's been hard to get excited. It's been difficult to stay amped. It's been nearly impossible to have fun watching sports commenting on sports. I used to go to sports. I used to flock to sports. And you are supposed to be my welcome distraction for those things, to paraphrase Mike Polk Jr. 
it's been hard. It's been difficult to get excited for sports. And this, bailing on a season, is the epitome of wedges that you will drive between your product, which is entertainment, and the fans, who are furious. <clears throat> Eight Nebraska players in their lawsuit. Their attorneys received some requested documents from the Big Ten on Monday, and they said they're reviewing them before commenting. In the threat of litigation by attorneys general from Ohio and Nebraska. Instead, it'll be based on science. Oh my... This is not based on science. Science is not recommending that you cancel a season. The emergence of rapid testing is a positive there, but the still still raging, the still raging corona is a... Can I even say this on, on YouTube? I'm censoring the word. And that's the other part of it. We've been so censored. Our, 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 our content, our page has been erased without explanation, without opportunity for remedy, Without conversation by Facebook. The New American Media has been deleted. My personal profile deleted. Under attack. And it makes it not fun to spend time creating videos, researching stories, breaking perspective. Why? So nobody can see it? I can't pretend that this hasn't It hasn't destroyed my willingness, my desire to break the news down for you each day, but it's made it. I've always wondered what this would have been like had I had a playing a level playing field. I don't know why some channels and some people are allowed to say what they think and why others aren't. And I haven't been able to crack the code yet. I'm not done trying. I'm a good dude, good track record, good heart, good insight, good ideas, good connections, good work ethic. I'm not done. But man, just don't tell me this is about science. Don't tell me this is about science. The world is open. Look at the Kroger workers, the Trader Joe's workers, the Speedway workers. Look at your gas stations. Look at your post office. Look at your uh, grocery stores. Look at your... Look at whatever was deemed essential. Are there massive outbreaks from these groups of people? The people that have had to work this whole time? The people that have been back for multiple months working? The economy has to go. People have to work. And we have to shed some weight. Get a little healthier, stop on the booze, get some vitamin D. Vitamin D is key. Get your sun. Take vitamin D supplements if you have to. Vitamin D might be one of the most important factors. I just I just can't read something that says, yeah, they're going to go with science. Number one, science is never settled. Number two, you don't have the opportunity to bubble wrap yourself and do this. Do a duck and cover underneath your desk in elementary school during an air raid siren until it's safe to come out. We've done that since March. It's mid-September. We have to work. We have to get back to life as normal. You want to take some basic common sense precautions? Okay. The whole masking up to walk around. If it's not an N95, it's pretty ridiculous to be walking around with a mask. But you know what? Let's do it. Let's grant a couple of concessions and get back to, to work. Get back to life. Start having events again. You are killing. How many restaurants have been destroyed and decimated and will never return? I saw a number, almost 18,000 restaurants. That's a tough industry to make it in anyway. You can't do this. Bars, restaurants, nightclubs, music venues. Think about comedians, music venues, Bands, musicians, performers of all kinds. Destroyed. There's no science that says you can't do half of the things that are being banned. You can't go to the beach. You can't hang out outside. People outside without a mask getting in trouble. I, just, 
I gotta get through this story. Oh, the still raging virus is a roadblock, especially on college campuses. All Michigan State students have been told to quarantine for two weeks amid an outbreak there. Wisconsin Athletics currently is shut down and has gone to remote learning for two weeks given its spiking cases. Iowa just got back from a shutdown, and Maryland, Ohio State, Rutgers, Indiana, and Michigan all have experienced football shutdowns amid outbreaks of varying degrees. Michigan shut down some sports for a while, but not football. <clears throat> Multiple football players opted out of the season before the Big Ten's August 11 announcement, including four from Michigan State and one from Michigan, citing health and safety concerns. And on Monday, Ohio State star cornerback Sean Wade opted out. Interestingly, Wade's father, Randy, had been one of the most outspoken Big Ten parents protesting the conference's postponement decision. Money won't even be the deciding factor, despite several Big Ten schools citing possible $100 million, $100 million losses if the Big Ten doesn't play football. This isn't just the schools. This is concessions, this is merchandise, this is uh, food and drink, this is Uber and Lyft drivers, these are hotels, this is, this is travel. This is the economy. In Michigan State, football generates nearly $80 million of the athletic department's $140 million in revenues, with nearly $20 million coming from football ticket sales. Nearly $35 million for football TV rights and another $1.4 million from football game day parking and concessions. <clears throat> At Michigan, football brings in more than $122 million of the department's $198 million in revenues, with about $46 million for ticket sales, $35 million for football TV rights, and $2.5 million for game day parking and concessions. Michigan State also brings in about $12 million in contributions, often from alums and often tied to football tickets. At Michigan, that figure is about $29 million. Blah, blah, blah. It continues. It doesn't continue. I'm done. <laughs> Just, I can't. I guess I'll tweet this out. Okay, so follow us at... American underscore media underscore. And I'll also do this um, at the unhappy hour underscore. All right. That's tweeted out. Check us out there. Moving on. Because I, I just, I can't with this anymore. Because part of what you have to wonder, there are coronavirus up outbreaks, right? That's the story. How many of the people don't even know they have it? A lot. Why is that? Because there are no symptoms. None. Out of the people that get it, what is it like? Similar to experiencing flu-like symptoms. How many college students have died? Why wasn't that a part of the story? People that are so concerned about the number of people that have this. Viruses rage through the world all the time. You don't shut down for them. The CDC revised their data to say that out of the roughly 180,000 people that have died of coronavirus, they said, well, let's be more accurate. Oh, now you want to be accurate. Now you want to be more accurate. Okay, CDC, let's talk about it. Out of the 180,000 people that they said died of coronavirus, they revised the number to say roughly only about 9,000 people died from coronavirus which is a big number. <clears throat> That's a lot of people. But you have to now compare a population the size of this country and compare it to smoking, drinking, automobile accidents, heart disease, diabetes. Go down the list. There's many things that kill many people every year that we never shut society down for. Roughly 9,000 people died of coronavirus, but the other people had comorbidities or multiple comorbidities that made it happen. 
Is this the new information that you suddenly have? Big Ten. Mm. Good times.